on the on the actual forums that people give you advice yeah the ones i get yeah 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 so so underneath your videos some people make comments like to help you yeah. one of the comments was steve said you're using both hands you are oh, see, yeah. you're just doing it again yeah right it, it could, i see so many things when we're out training but if i pulled you up for everything you'd go home with an headache yeah and yet there's so many little things you're doing so can you see the importance of that lead that leather lead compared yeah. to really long lead that you've got yeah right because that lead works brilliantly and it's it's soft on your hands when you pull it yeah. now what you can do with this lead on purpose it's been designed like this on purpose the military use leads like this and there's a certain way to hold it and there's a certain way to control it and everything right and you can control the lead and if there's a loop in that lead there I'm happy and the dog's happy. Loop in the lead there. But guess what I've got here? I've got maneuverability. So if he gets to the end of the line away from me, I have total control. And he'll learn that just because he's away from you, it doesn't mean he's in trouble until that lead goes tight. So this is teaching him how to work a slip lead. A slip lead hasn't got much distance because you're down to here already. Yeah. Right? What I'm saying is, if this lead goes tight, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it. But look what he's doing. He's learnt that quick. Watch. See how fast he's learnt? Yeah. That, that do not pull. That's from last week and the work that you've put in this week. Yeah. Look. See the, see the weight of the, of the two clips? Yeah. They're holding it there where your slip lead doesn't half the time. You've got a bit of weight there. When he feels that, he knows that everything's sound for him. So when I'm going obedience training, or I've got a dog in the house and it's not getting off the settee when told, look what he did there, Jeff. Yeah. Who told him to do that? Nobody. So I'm calm, aren't I? That's right, yeah. But when I go in there and give a correction, I go in reasonably firm. Because I'm saying to him, you're old enough now to take it. He wasn't old enough to take it when you first come to me. You've gone m roughly two months, haven't you? Roughly, since you met me, yeah. coming up to two months. And I've seen the drive come up with the gameplay, and I can see the dog needs it. Because look at the dog, he's so focused on everything else except you. He's not focused on me and I'm disciplining him. But watch what happens. As soon as the pressure goes on. I want him to go for something and let that lead go tight. So I just did that and said nothing. He's come in to me, voluntary, no. I physically pulled him in because we can use yank and crank but we also use that light pressure the pressure and release that is so important those leaves are, are flowing around here he's obsessed with it he's got an obsession with this behavior now I can stop this behavior straight away I can put an e-collar on him and as soon as he goes for that leaf I can punish him for it in that leaf he'll avoid the leaves don't want that I want him to want to play the game with me and at the moment, he's not got that focus to play the game with us until it suits him. Look, look. It's obsessional behaviour that it can get worse and worse and worse if you allow it. But he's not going for it, is he now? Where before he was going for it because he was not getting nothing negative, but he was getting a positive. So he's learning for association. He can watch them past, but don't go for it because there's going to be a negative. Right, now watch. Did I give him the verbal cue? No, I gave him the visual clue. I give him a cue to park his ass up there. I've not got the retrieving me hand, he's not looking at me. If I had the retrieving me hand, he would be looking at me because I know how focused he is on the retrieve. He's more interested in those leaves then listen to us. But guess what? He's realising there's going to be a consequence if he comes off there. So, yes, it's the, it's, the, it's the fun place, but it's also the naughty step. And it doesn't matter what I'm doing in the yard, whether I'm dropping dummies here and dropping dummies there, he's not having them till I say, 
and I would go and pick him up. And if he comes off that place board, I put him back on the place board. So don't believe me? Watch this. Watch. Before, he'd go for it. Now watch what happens. There's no way he would have sat there before, is there? Look how he's calmed down. Look how the ears have gone back and he's surrendered. He's got soft eyes. To say to him, no problem, you're not having them. So the question is, how did I get that control? How did I get that dog to sit on that place back and not move? That dog is obsessed with retrieving, loves retrieving. Why is the dog looking the way he's looking? Ears back, not particularly happy, but he's not moving. He's not looking at leaves, is he? He's looking at switching off. He's saying, hmm, I think that I best just sit here and behave myself. What created this? The next video will open your eyes. It will show you how negatives work. It's as simple as that. Negatives work.